Nikolai asks, um, he read some lectures from early 50s, which describe a sailor operating and without using his body moving objects with uh, supposedly the structure beams. And uh, his question is, do you know a case who is able to do it? And um, yeah, if it's possible to be done. So number one, it's um, we're not into being in a circus, okay? This is not the point, okay? Um, I know some preachers, some people that have really OT powers and they are able to move things in the physical universe with their postulate, okay? And with their postulating, getting other people to do the actions. So, you know, the way to put it in like in a circus, okay, I'm a clown or I'm a magician and I can put this uh, thing up in the air without touching it, fine. Okay, let's go to the circus, you know, pay uh, $10 and go to see a show. But this is not the point, okay? The point is uh, about, uh, and, and it, it can be done, of course. Of course it can be done. It's something very individual, each case and... Um, Look, when you're able to think about something and get it happen in the physical universe without moving your little finger, good, you OT. This, you, you did it, okay? And this is the power of postulates. And we are operating. I mean, this is our uh, goal to operate in this level all the time. Oh, uh, can I add something, Tammy? Yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always consider the T to be someone who puts goals and achieves them in the physical universe and uh, uh, has a great ARC and KRC with his environment. But I do have one story that I corresponded with somebody who was an examiner in 70s and who did exams to pre OTs. Um, who were doing original OT levels. So after one session, a pre-OT, female pre-OT, put her ring on table to pick up the cans. And when she reached for the cans, the ring moved with her hand. So that's, wow. yeah, that's one uh, incident that I uh, personally remember. Another thing I just recall is in, in Philadelphia doctorate, in PDC, Ron writes it explicitly that don't invalidate your PC with not being able to move things in the physical universe without using uh, his body. He says it's not the purpose because we want a person to be able to change his own universe to move things around his own universe, his thoughts, his decisions, and whatever it is in his universe. So Tami, you told that you were frustrated by the limitation of government. So the question is, what abilities does a person should have in order not to be frustrated next time this uh, uh, similar crisis happen? Right. Um, the answer is the KRC triangle, which is power. KRC equals power, knowledge, responsibility, and control. You have to gain lots of knowledge. And knowledge has two parts. One is uh, just general knowledge of your occupation, your profession, how to deal with that in life, how to deal with that in life. Um, uh, to, uh, able to evaluate true data from false data, uh, doing some training of Scientology courses, it's knowledge. And then the other part of knowledge is uh, know yourself, know thyself, okay? You have to really know who you really are, 
who you really, really, really are. What is your beingness? Who you are? What are your abilities, true abilities? And this you discover in auditing. Who am I? What am I doing? What are my goals? What are my plans? What are my true plans, my true purposes, my true games? And then you get, then when you have all this knowledge and then uh, you take responsibility of the situation you're in, whatever the government or whatever crisis, you know, war situation, and then you're able to control it much better if you have the two, uh, two parts of knowledge. One is like knowledge of the uh, courses in Scientology and also like the data of what's going on in the world. You have to know what's going on in the world. You cannot just go like this and, oh, I don't want to hear anything about. It. You have to know. Uh, who's doing what, where, how, to be really oriented in the present time physical universe. Yes, I don't like politics. I hate politics. I think all politics are, politicians are, you know, I don't like them. But I know, I know who they are. I know what they're doing. Um, you know, I, f I follow, I follow what, what's going on. Okay, so I have some knowledge and then I know what to do. So this is my answer uh, and this is my ongoing thing myself and this is what I tell my friends to do. Gain knowledge, take responsibility for what's going on and then you'll be able to control it. So, um, and then you're more in power and it's a gradient scale. It's not like uh, black or white or, uh, okay. It's like you have this little uh, Ikea C triangle and then goes big, 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 big. Okay, so when body becomes old, what is the way to leave it? You know, when you are really flat on uh, interiorization, exteriorization, and there are gradients on that. It's not like you have the ability or you don't have the ability. There are gradients and you can increase the, um, the ability to be more determined about this. So this is the whole idea. As I said earlier in the book, um, you know, advanced procedures and axioms. This is what we're aiming. Uh, so what I added to time answer, so the entire bridge, when you're getting rid of the charge up to clear and then on OT levels, and then also original levels, which operate, taking operate exterior, they're all setting you up to smoothly and comfortably leaving your body, right? So. You don't have engrams, you don't have body level stuff, so you don't have psychosomatic pain when leaving the body, you know? And it, basically without charge, uh, you, you're not attached as a fed into a body, so you can decide and leave. And then you have some drills, you know, <laughs> how to do. So if you can be exteriorized at will, so you can leave body for good when it's uh, old. Are there people who can exteriorize at will? Can they do it with perception? Can they demonstrate to others their perception? Um, I can give my own example. When I was moving up the bridge, for me it was really hard to exteriorize myself. Um, it happened rarely, but then somewhere on, on the border of nodes and solo nodes, and especially in the end of soul notes, it really became like Tammy told the uh, natural ability, like something you don't think about. You, you want to be somewhere else, so you go somewhere else and that's it. <laughs> and you look what is there and you're coming back. Uh, I won't tell that it happens like all the day because I'm busy working. So <laughs> Probably I'm not traveling into other places when I have a PC in front of me. But before I go to sleep, I can exteriorize. It calms me down from all the problems and uh, difficult situations I confront in this day. Yeah, it's very useful ability. And, you know, I looked around what is around where I want to go. I decided I will stay on this planet for now. <laughs> so, there's um, Ella Rage, um, uh, just a little thing about that. You know, before you go to sleep, if you have hard time to go to sleep, just go exterior. How do you do that? He says, uh, just put anchor points on the, you know, the eight corners of the room. You know, put anchor points here, put anchor points back, there, there. Boom, 
<laughs> so this is something that you can use and uh, try it. And uh, you don't have to demonstrate it to others. Just do it for yourself. This is the question is in book one, the genetics, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's uh, written that a person can achieve the state of clear in 150, 200 hours. And in most difficult cases, 500 hours. But now it's getting longer. Some cases are being audited uh, 2,000 hours. Why is that? What's, uh, and what can be done? What should be done in case that is being audited so much hours and yet hasn't achieved the state of clear? You know, I have to look at the folder of each PC to see exactly what was done. Uh, maybe the guy was not duplicated by his auditor. Um, maybe the program was not correct. Maybe there are other factors that need to be handled. Uh, there are many, many factors that stop a being um, that block his progress up to clear some sort of resistiveness in the case, not the person himself, but in the case, or there are some factors that might need to be addressed. And, um, you know, it's like you're driving a car and your hand brakes is up and you drive, you know, and you push the car, you know, and you really press on the gas uh, pedal, but the car doesn't, uh, 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 you know, doesn't go. And so you have to find what is holding up the case, what is the hand brakes that is holding up the case. And once you put your finger on it and you handle it, then the case runs uh, really fast. So uh, LRH wrote it, it's in the class eight bulletins, um, in the graduate five bulletins, what are the exact points that the case can be hung up on. Um, and once you, you, um, you find it, you're able to handle it, then it goes much faster. So I don't know what level of auditor was auditing this case. Um, this is like one answer. Yeah, uh, it's important to understand that Dianetics book was a first book, okay? There was lots of development after this book. And uh, the first estimations were correct. However, they were correct for cases of 1950. So there is a bulletin which calls the theory of new gray chart, which explains that 1950 and 2000 or 1980, how what is written in the building is not the same times, you know, we have more economical pressures, we have society that is very drugged, you know, full of drugs, and other case barriers that, of course, makes it harder for somebody to achieve clear in the frame of uh, 200 or 50 or 500 hours. So sometimes that's what the case needs, a lot of hours, because he was in such bad case shape when he came in, you know, dragged and stressed and other stuff. But yeah, yeah, and what Tammy said, you, know, you need to analyze each case separately and find if there is bug, what is the bug. Just to add to that, Aviv, this is totally correct. Don't forget, Hubbard discovered or built up the bridge from the top down to the bottom. Okay, he came up with the book one with Dianetics, 1950. And then, as we saw earlier in the lecture, he said, if you can just go and be exterior, just go behind, you know, three feet back of your head, fine, then you can do it, no problem. Okay, later on, he found out that people cannot really do it. And then he went down and cut down and cut down and cut down. And when a, usually now when a person comes in, he's got to do the purification rundown. In the 50s, people were, you know, less polluted. The bodies were less toxic. And as Aviv said, okay, that's why it might take longer. Yeah. So what I wanted to say is uh, when you program a case, the goal is not to quickly make him clear. What you want to do, as Tammy said, as LRH says, is to make the person more self-determined, and to make the able more able. The people who come to us, all of us in Scientology, our group, we are very able people, 
and we want to become more able. And so you do not take the PC now and quickly put him on Dianetics or on Ed to immediately or quickly bring him to clear. And then you have a clear, but he's a clear cannibal. He's not able. So you want to work with a person on all the grades and some of the grades take tens or hundreds of hours. But now when we take a pre-clear person to the state of clear, after he's done all his grades, we usually find that the person is very able, very competent, very successful in life. I mean, we can see this, the people that we work with, and I think we can all agree, the people that we see who achieve the state of clear are, success, are successful across the dynamics. So it took some more time, but you get a much better result. And that is why around 1980, 81, Ron Hubbard changed the bridge. I think it was his decision then to put the grades and then Ned. Have you ever contacted a between life uh, area implant and what have you seen there? Go up on the OT levels, it's all there. Or, you know, just to get an idea, read the book uh, History of Man, he describes some of the implants there. Um, and uh, I've audited uh, pre-clears and on this time between lives and they, and even if they did not read the book, History of Men, it's unbelievable how they describe to me these implants in details, even if they are not on the OT levels. And I'm like, wow, I'm amazed. Wow, this is exactly page 86 in the book. You know, how did he know it? You know, he doesn't even know how to read this guy. <laughs> not English, not Russian, nothing. And uh, wow, it's exactly word by word he described to me this uh, implant. And we run it and we run it. And uh, then he feels free. And, uh, and this is between lives. Yeah. So I have full reality on that uh, for my own track. And also when I audit other pieces, um, it's very solid reality I have on that. Okay. The reason that this subject is important to me as an orator and the reason that we developed a special course on between live data, because I had three pieces that I understood at least that were Scientologists in previous life and they were really messed up by this implant badly, badly, badly. Mm -hmm. They all told me the same recollections from the past life, like they been the same people, did the same things. You know, it's unbelievable, like three different persons telling me the same story. So I understood that this story was implanted in them. So, so for me, it's very important to get this data out to people and for people to go up the bridge and handle this implant or any other implant for this matter. On the OT levels, is person always exterior or he is exterior at will? He can be exterior. It's easier for him. It's, look, it's a gradient scale of ability. It's not like one day you have wings and you can fly. It's an increased ability. The more charge you remove from the case, before clear, after clear, the easier it is for you to go exterior. And, but it, it becomes natural. It's not something that you uh, uh, switch on, switch off, um, because it's easier to operate that way. That's all. Uh, being stuck in a body, it's pretty uh, cramped. So it can be exteriorization an attempt to blow the game, like in suicide, like we entering bodies to play the body game, and then somebody is not confronting this, and he commits suicide. So uh, how can I uh, differentiate the just, you know, exteriorization at will and attempt to blow the game? Okay, it's um, um, depends on the tone level of the person, the tone level of the incident, um, the attitude of the guy. Um, you know, LRH talks about the Black Panther mechanism in the Tech Dictionary. He explains a very good definition. Uh, it's from Dianetics. 
um, your attitude about uh, what are you going to do when you confront something? Are you going, um, let me show you here the, the picture, the Black Panther mechanism. It's right here. Um, here we are. This is the best. Uh, you see it? The Black Panther mechanism. You can attack the problem. Okay. You can flee from the problem. You can avoid it. You can let it. You can succumb. So suicide, it's uh, one solution. Okay, depends on your attitude on the game. If a person exterior, would he be able easily to use his ability for telepathy, prediction? Yes, of course, of course. When a person is exterior, he's much more able in, in all areas, in all aspects. So the answer is yes, more telepathy, uh, more ability, yes. I person who is exterior can get used to it and not being aware of him being exterior. Yes, definitely. Definitely. It's very natural. I'm telling you, it's like breathing. You don't think about breathing. Do you think about breathing? Oh, now I'm breathing. I in, breathing out, breathing. No, no, no. Look how much attention and I have to put it. No, you just breathe. And uh, so, yeah, you don't have to have attention on it. It becomes, it's very natural. You see, I have to, to mention one thing. The reason why it bec we're talking about something, wow, exteriorization, it's because our whole culture is oriented and fixated on bodies. Uh, you have a nice body, you have an ugly body, you have a thin body, you have a fat body, uh, you have nice clothes on your body, you have like lots of diamonds on your body, uh, you put your body in a big car. So all the attention is like the whole intention of, uh, you know, the mess universe here. We're all indoctrinated into putting a lot of tension on, attention on the body. And then you anchor points as a state and just go into the body. And then it's very hard to exteriorize. So the purpose of auditing, you know, one of the purposes is just to get the attention off the body and then you can go in and out freely. What is the main thing that makes Titan deteriorate as a spiritual entity? I can't imagine NOT being suppressive. What is an OT? <laughs> you know, it's a gradient, gradient of abilities, gradient of becoming more and more OTs. And um, each one of us has committed some overts. Each one of us at one point of his time track uh, was in a suppressive valence and doing suppressive things. Um, yeah, I, I don't know any angels or... Um, um, so, as I told you earlier, there's a specific time, specific incident that one acted as a suppressive. So, even now, um, you know, he's, what do you mean he's OT? Like, you mean on the OT levels or um, the OT level is just another gradient of becoming more and more to uh, OT. Um, so, on the OT levels, yeah, you still have some charged areas or um, things that you haven't looked at and you still in so yeah you can do some suppressive acts intentionally unintentionally you can have postulates uh, you can have a certain education that uh, directs you in a certain way it's all on the gradient okay uh i think an ot is not like tammy said earlier it's not to be in the circus and show that you can do something. An OT is not OT on the first dynamic. An OT is on all eight dynamics. And he naturally, naturally works for the most good for all the people and all the dynamics. So if a person is suppressive, uh, the SP is PTS to himself. He would drive himself down the tone scale and he drives down his own abilities and he destroys himself. So to be suppressive is exactly the opposite of being OT. And OT does the most good for the most people. And the people around him feel that this Satan is contributing to them and making their lives better. So uh, I think we have seen 
like 30 years of operating a draw center. Occasionally we had SPs coming online, pretending they want to go on the bridge and they all collapsed, they all dropped off the bridge and the SP cannot go up the bridge. Uh, I mean, in the Church of Scientology, we see Mr. David Miscavige, he's definitely an SP. He's destroying the church. The Church of Scientology is shrinking. And we, the group here, uh, independent Scientologists, free zoners, we're expanding, we're getting bigger, we're communicating with each other. So we are the real OTs. It's not where you are on the bridge, it's how much it's been caught over life, and it's how much you contribute to all the dynamics. A philosophical question, how low can it go? Can you, can you lose all your abilities? Um, yes, of course, of course, of course. I mean, if you don't learn um, the, the laws of the physical universe and the laws of theta, if you don't really know the axioms of Dianetics, of Scientology, the logics, uh, the factors, um, yeah, you can just lose it all. Uh, of course, it's up to you. It's up to you um, to, to work on it, to fight for it. Not, not fight, but, uh, you know, do some effort to achieve this, of course. Goes back to the... Goes back to the question before about a suppressive being OT. If you commit a lot of overts, wood holds, you lose your abilities, you go downhill, you a dwindling spiral of knowledge, of ability, and you become introverted and very much into mist, into the body. Yeah. Okay. I want to add from myself also, there is a great um, article by Ron Hubbard, does clearing cancel the need for training, when he specifically says that we all were at ease at some time, so how come we became in the state we are today is because we didn't have data of Scientology, we didn't do training, there was no auditors on the whole track, you know, this is a new thing to be an auditor. So he, but his solution for not going back and losing he, your abilities is to get trained, to become an auditor, and then you can know the anatomy of traps and you can like easily get out of the traps and you know, not to lose your abilities. I'm thinking of one more point, and that is the OT levels are solo levels. So you audit yourself, you have to be highly trained and you have to be totally responsible for yourself and you're not being treated or handled by another. You take responsibility for your own case, for all the dynamics, and of course for, well, around you what's going on and you handle it. You, you don't have an auditor taking you somewhere. You don't have a guru or a rabbi or a leader taking you, you take yourself. And you study the tech and you're handling yourself and the environment around you. How is that? My thoughts are answered by the mass universe. Like just yesterday, I was thinking hard about an LRH quote to tell my friend. And today morning, I see it on my Facebook memory as a post I made four years ago. It's the exact post I was wondering about. Look. As you go more OT and more OT on a gradient scale, uh, you are more in control and you are controlling your mess around you, okay? Maybe you don't do telekinesis, like get this up in the air uh, without touching it. But things like that, you know, you think about something and then boom, it happens in the physical universe. And uh, this is just look, this is natural, you know, this is how it should be all the time, not just uh, once, once a year, okay? And this is our goal, what we're working towards. This is our aim. Well, what time you told is totally correct. It's just little thing. Who created the mass universe, right? So. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, read, read the factors, read the factors and see who created this messed universe. You, <laughs> me. <laughs> Good. Before you go to sleep tonight, okay? So do what LOA says in the PDC lecture. He says in December 52, he says, if you want to know the way to go to sleep, just put out eight anchor points and hold them there. Beautiful feeling, just gorgeous. L. Ron Hubbard.